Hello and welcome to How Do I Do White Boxing with BSP Brushes. Well, we're going to start off and we're just going to go ahead and start fresh and clean. This is going to be your project. Just go ahead and follow along if you want to. And we are going to learn how to do white boxing with BSP Brushes. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create a new folder here. We're going to hold everything in here. That way we make sure everything is all fresh and new. So basically white boxing is we're going to take a fresh clean canvas, a new level, and then we're just going to put stuff in it and we're going to see if we can make something fun out of it. We don't need 8,000 polygon toenails on a character that can do backflips and somersaults. No, we're just going to make a nice happy little scene and we're going to see if we can make some fun. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new level. I'm going to go ahead and go with the default level. Go up using the default level. It'll give me a nice little fog and some light and a player start and a sky sphere. But we don't need our floor. Let's go ahead and get rid of our floor. And we're going to start with a nice blank canvas here. So BSPs. These are in their own little section here under modes, under the placing. And you'll find a few pre-built BSPs. Let's go ahead and start and just drop a BSP and right to the ground. And you'll notice we have a nice little block that we can work with. BSPs have a giant setting screen over here. And you can also manipulate them using our normal movement and rotation and scaling. So let's actually go ahead and we'll scale this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and scale it out like this. And we have a nice little floor. If we were to hit play, you'll find our character starts off and he's on our floor. There we go. That's a good start. Now keep in mind, the size of my floor, this is just what I want to start with. This is yours. Go ahead and make it whatever size you want. Just have fun. The whole point of this is to have fun and see if we can actually make something that would be enjoyable to play. So we have our first brush here. Let's go over the little options. We have our normal location, rotation, and scale. And then on our brush settings, we have a few different things in here. Some of the important ones are like the size. By default, you'll notice if I drop a new box in, it's going to start off at 200 for a square. But you could go ahead and, you know, maybe you want to make this wider or thicker, maybe a little taller, whatever you want. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and make a little wall. So maybe make it a little tall and we want it wide. And we'll go ahead and make it a little skinny. And we have a little wall here and we'll move it over here and maybe make it a little wider. Let's see, green. So on the Y, move it over a little bit. And there we go. We have a wall if we were to play. You know, so we have a wall in front of us. Now the wall itself, we use the sizing. You could use scale as well. Scaling is perfectly fine. You know, if we want a little wider, we can just adjust our scale using our little widgets or adjust our scale here, maybe two. You notice it's twice as tall. It doesn't really matter. Either way works. White boxing is just simply getting something on the screen. This is not the stuff you use when you're actually going to have your game. You'll replace this with much prettier things. For now, we're just throwing things into our level and we're seeing what sticks, seeing what looks good, seeing what's fun. So, what would we want to do next? Well, it looks pretty lonely. How about we go ahead and we'll give us a little bit more room to play with. We'll go ahead and we'll click on our bottom little brush here. And we're going to make another one. Now we can go in and we can do another box and we can change our sizes. But we want one just like our first box. We want to make a duplicate of this one. So if we hold down the Alt key and we click on one of our translation arrows and we drag, it's going to drag out a friend for our original floor. We now have a duplicate of original floor. We'll go and move it over a little bit. And there we go, now we have a much bigger floor. And if we were gonna play, you'll notice we can go ahead and we have a bigger area to play in. Okay, this is super. Well, what kind of game do we want? Well, I was thinking, well, let's throw a little platform in to jump on. That would be fun. Maybe, maybe jump up on a platform. Let's try doing that. We'll take a box. We'll move it up into the sky. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And, well, let's see what happens. Oh no, we can't get up. It's too high. Well, that's pretty easy to fix. 
That's the nice thing about white boxing. You're not committing to anything. We'll just move it down a little bit. We'll try this again. And there we go. We now have our platform. It's all nice and happy and we can jump on it. But of course, that's not fun. One platform. Let's give our platform a few more friends. We'll use the method we talked about before. And we'll alt drag out a friend. And we'll move him over here. And oh, let's move him up a little bit. Make it a little more fun. And let's alt drag another friend out over here. And move him up and oh, let's go ahead and move him over here. And let's try that out. We got a little platform here, platform here, platform here. Oh, look at that. Wasn't that fun? We've got a start of a little game here. Maybe a little like Mario game or, you know, something with a little bit of jumping on it. But, well, we need something else here. And it's actually starting to get a little hard to see if we... Go from platform to platform. Whoops. Oh, no. Almost fell off there. That wouldn't have been good. Well, we could have just restarted. It would have just been a happy little mistake. Not a big deal. So, it's starting to get a little difficult to see our platforms. Maybe we can make it where we could see them so they're not part of the background itself. Well, let's go ahead and mix some colors. We're going to go in. Oh, no. I noticed our white boxing folder is empty. That's not good. What if we have a crash? That would be a bad little accident. Let's turn this into a happy little accident. Let's save. We're going to go ahead and save our map. We'll go into our example folder. Where did I put that? Right here. And we'll go ahead and save this as our white box map. There we go. Now if we have any accidents, they'll be happy. So let's make some colors. We're going to need a new material. We'll go into our material and we'll name this one. Well, I'm going to make this a little grid material that's full of color. So we'll call this one grid master we'll go ahead and go in there now right now if you look through everything you will notice that we have everything looking the same and we have this nice little grid color here but it's a nice little you know it's a little bland gray we want some more colors in there but you'll notice that when we hit play, the character has a shadow, and these back sides are a little bit dark, and, you know, we're using our lighting, which which is okay. But when we want a white box, we want to actually see these things a little bit better. We want to actually, you know, we don't need the fog, and we don't need the explosions. We just want to get some fun. We want to make a nice little fun little level. So let's actually make it where our material, our little color that we're going to use, it's not lit. We're going to make an unlit material. So let's go ahead. We'll go down here to our material domain. And you'll notice your different types here. But down here under the blend mode, well, there we go, shading model. I knew I'd find it. By default, it's default lit. We'll go and change that to unlit. And you'll notice we now only have a few things. And we want the emissive color. If I go ahead and I push three and click, we get a standard color picker box. Let's go and make this white. And we'll go ahead and put this into emissive. And we'll hit save. And that's it. We have a nice little white color. If we wanted to, well, let's make the ground white. We can just drag it and drop it. And now we have a white color. Of course, this is a little bit hard to see because you can't really see any distinction. And if we were to make our boxes white, well, it would make them invisible. Well, let's give it a little bit of a pattern. So let's go back into our grid. And let's add a grid. So we'll hold down T, we'll add a texture sample, and we'll look for grid. And, well, we have no grid. Well, guess what? We have a grid, but it's actually hidden. We'll go into the view options. We'll go into show engine content. And then now we can find grid. The engine comes with a grid that we can use, and we can borrow it and ask it to play nicely. So we'll click on our default white grid. And we now have a white grid. If we were to put that into our emissive color, and we hit save. You'll notice we now have, oh, we have a nice white grid. But we don't want only white. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it where we can change the color. So it's pretty simple. We'll take our color here. We'll drag off and we'll tell it to multiply. When we multiply a color by another color, we get another color. And this will let us set our color to whatever color we want. So when we connect it up like this and we hit save, we can now adjust this color and our final will be adjusted and we'll have a nice little grid that's colored how we want it. Now, so we don't have to make duplicates of this, what we're going to do is we're going to make material instances. 
This is basically just taking and laying out a bunch of different colors on our palette and we can pick and choose. We can even blend them if we want to. So let's go ahead and right click and convert this to a parameter. We'll name this our color. And oh, that was happy. We'll go ahead and save that and we'll hit save and we are done. This is our master color for our grid. Well, let's make, let's make some blue platforms. So we'll take our grid master, right click, create a material instance. We're going to go ahead and name this. It's no longer the master. We're going to name this grid blue. We'll open it up and you'll notice over here, we can change the color to whatever we want. So let's go ahead. Well, let's make it a nice little purple blue, more of an azure color. We'll save that. And you'll now notice we have white and blue. Okay. Let's make our little platforms blue. We'll go ahead and drag and drop this on. Oh no, it only changes the top. Well, we'd have to click and click and we'd have to go through every single side to make it blue. Well, that's a little difficult. Is there an easier way? Well, of course there's an easier way. What we want to do is we'll use some of these other options over here. So down here under geometry, we have select. This allows us to select all the different parts along with things that are next to it. So like, for example, on this one, we want to go ahead and select the matching brush. This entire thing is a brush. When we do that, the whole thing gets selected. We can drag our grid over here in the nice little green box. It's saying, hey, give me a color. And now we have a blue platform. If we go over here, we do the same. We now have a blue platform. Now when we play through, well, look at that. We have a little more color. We can actually see our boxes a little bit easier. And our little platforming game, well, it's got a little more life to it. So let's go ahead and play with some of the more options. Well, down here we have our bottom box, but it looks really big compared to our wall. Well, that's weird. Well, no. Over here we have a scale of 1, but on our bottom floor we have scales of 4.25. It's a big, big scale. Well, that's really easy to fix. We can go and select both of these. Oh no, it turned blue. Well, there's another happy little accident. You know, when you're playing with BSPs, it will automatically change color based on the material you have selected if you have one. Right now I have nothing selected. We'll drop in a little box and it's our default gray friend. Let's delete him. Let's select our blue color and drop in a new box. And we have a blue friend. There we go. Nice easy way of creating things all colored up how we want it. Now on here, what happened was I clicked and I tried to click on the next one, but I held down the shift button. And when you hold down the shift button and you're playing with BSPs and you have a little material selected, it will color it in. So I, I can click the wall. I can hold down shift and click the wall again. And it's now blue. I'll go over here and it's now blue. Let's go ahead and change these back to white. We'll change it to white. We'll change this one to white. Well, there's got to be an easier way, right? Well, we have our select options, remember? Right here, all adjacent surfaces. If we were to select this floor, all adjacent surfaces, it'll select everything around it. If we were to select this floor and all coplanar surfaces, it'll select everything along the same plane, which means the entire floor. Now we can go over here, tell it we want to display, and we'll make all of our surfaces white. And it's nice and simple. We can go back over here, change this one white, and now we have it all white again. But we still have this really weird looking floor. Well, let's go back to changing that. So down here we have scale. This changes the scale of what your surfaces look like. So we can like click on this one. And if we try to click on the other one again with the shift key, it's going to have a problem. So we can go back in and select the coplanar surfaces, or we can use the control key and that'll allow us to select more than one thing. So let's do that. We can go ahead and change our scale now back down to one and hit apply. And you'll notice we now have the smaller bricks. Now this back wall is a little bit off. It's fine. It's not a big deal. This is just a white box. It's going to get replaced with your better looking models later. For now, we just want to have fun. But you know what? Maybe it is fun having it all matched up. Maybe you got a little bit of compulsive disorder and you actually want it to be straight because you like organizing things. No problem. We can do that. Let's click on that wall. 
And let's go over here to our surface properties for pan and rotate. Well, looking at our x and y, we're going to need to pan, it looks like, along the left. So let's try this one. This will move it over by a small amount, a larger amount, a larger amount, a much larger amount, and then whatever you feel like. Let's try this little small one, and you'll notice it moves over. Well, let's try going the other way. We'll click this arrow. We'll go back this way. Let's see what we can do. Oh, it went a little too far. Well, let's move back a smaller amount, and there we go. Oh, nope, still not good. Let's try one more. That's close enough. Look at that. Our wall is actually looking a lot better. Let's say you wanted maybe it up a little bit. Well, we have our up and down. We'll move this up a little bit. And there we go. It looks a little bit better. You know what? I'm kind of worried our friend, our little guy's going to fall off. Let, let's go ahead and we'll move another wall over here. And we'll move another wall over here. Let's go ahead and rotate this wall a little bit. We'll move him over like that. You know what? If yours doesn't look like this, that's fine. This is, again, your creation. It's supposed to look like what you want. I'm trying to make a little bit of a fun little platformer. You know, maybe we'll put some lava. Oh, let's do some lava. Actually, let's try that. Let's maybe put, let's take our little ground here. And we're going to duplicate this one over. And then we're going to duplicate this one over again. And then we need some lava. Okay, well, let's take our master color and we'll create another instance. We'll call this one Grid Lava. And we'll find a nice little red color. Go over here. And let's see. Okay, let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Let's put some lava over here. Well, that'll work. There we go. Now we have some nice little lava. You know what? Let's actually make it where it is not a grid. We want it to where it doesn't look like it's scenery. Well, that's easy enough. Let's take our master. Let's duplicate that. We'll change this one to... We'll just call it unlit master. We'll go in here. And let's go ahead and we'll just get rid of our multiply. We'll get rid of our grid. See, that's the whole point of this. This is just, you know, you're having fun. You're figuring it out as you go along. We'll take this. We'll create an instance. We'll call this one Unlit Lava. Let's try that. And let's give this a nice little color here. Remember, it's all about having fun. If you're not having fun, then maybe try to do something else. Take a small break. Come back. See if you can have fun later. Let's put our lava. And there we go. Look at that. With some lava. Ooh, let's make it. Let's take this little guy here, we'll move him over, and we'll go ahead and we'll stretch him out. We'll move him over a little bit, but let's make it, let's make it where it's a little ramp. Actually, let's make a ramp. That sounds like fun. So we'll move our little guy over. Oh, he overlaps a little bit. Well, we can go over here to our snapping. We'll move it over just a little bit again. And there we go. Now they're next to each other. Okay. We'll set our snapping back up. Make sure we're using the bigger snapping for this stuff. So, let's make a little ramp. Well, with BSPs, we can actually edit. If you notice, we have an orange line. And we have some little, little blue dots here. Well, those are the vertexes. And these are the edges. And then these things we've actually been playing with that are slightly darker. Well, those are going to be our faces, our polygons. We can actually edit those. Well, let's go over here. And let's go over to our geometry editing. <clears throat> and this is where we can actually edit the brush itself. You'll notice when I click, it gets a little bit orange. Well, that's because we have our polygon selected. If I was to click on the edge, let's try finding our edge here. Where's our edge? I know it's here somewhere. Oh, our edge is not cooperating. There we go. There's our edge. You can actually select just the edge. And you'll notice you have a little widget here. We could select a wit and vertex by clicking on it. And now we have a vertex. So let's make a ramp. Well, a ramp is pretty simple. Let's, well, hopefully it's a little simple. Let's try. Here we go. We got our little edge. And we'll just drag our edge up. And there's our ramp. That's it. That's as simple as that. We didn't have to spend hours in a modeling program 
or having our friend make us stuff, we have a ramp. Let's check out our ramp. Let's see if we can get, oh, no. Let's try that again. Let's cheat a little bit. We'll jump over here. And we have a ramp that we can run up. And we try not to fall in the lava. Oh, no. Let's let's make a little thing at the top. So we'll take, we'll take one of our friends here. Let's move him. And we'll go back over here to placing. And we'll drag him over. And we'll pick him up. That way he's up with his friend. And there we go. We have a ramp with a little landing at the top. And let's say we want some stairs. Well, under BSP, we have stairs. We have a curved stair. We have a linear stair. We have a spiral stair. I think spiral stair would be fun. We'll go ahead and drag in a spiral stair. And maybe we'll turn it a little bit. Let's say like that. And we'll move him over here. And we'll move him up. And you'll notice sometimes it's hard to actually get this lined up. Well, the greatest thing about BSP is since you're working in squares, a really simple geometric shape, you can use the other views. So let's actually go to our top view. We'll look around for our friend. And if you can't find him, you can actually hit the F key on the keyboard for focus. And boom, we found our friend. Okay, well, there's our ramp. And there's our friend. And actually, this is a little bit hard to see. So let's actually go to like the left. That's a little better. We have our ramp top right here. And we have our little ramp friend here. We can just take our edge and move him over. Maybe like that. Let's see what it looks like now. Oh, he's off by a little bit. Let's go ahead and move him over. And there we go. Now we have a nice circular stair. We can go up. Wow, this is fun. Um, Well, you know what? Let's make another story. Let's go ahead and drag this up and we'll move it over. And let's see, what are we doing here? We'll move this over here, move them down a little bit. Let's say right around there. Is it close enough? Oh, that's close enough. Look at that. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, it's got a little gap. It's fine. And maybe we'll make this our little goal up here. Maybe we want, well, you know what? We need some scenery. Let's put some stuff that's fun up here. Let's make, well, you know what? Let's make a tree. You can never have too many trees. What do we need to do a tree? Well, you know what? This is white boxy. It just has to look like a tree. Let's take a little cylinder here. And let's make it a little bit smaller. Like that. Okay. Let's make it a little bit taller. That yeah, looks good. What else on the top of a, a tree? Well, we got a little branch here. We got a little trunk. We need the top of our tree. Let's take a cone. We'll put a cone on top. Make our cone a little bit smaller. A little bit small. Oh, actually, that'll work. Let's make it a little bit taller. That works. That's a tree. Well, let's 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 give our tree some color. Well, what do we need? Well, we don't want a grid, so let's take our ma unlit master, and we'll create an instance of it. And we need some green, so we'll go with unlit green. And let's go ahead and we'll make another one, and we'll call this one unlit brown. And let's go ahead and give ourselves some brown and some green. Now, I'm really bad with color. and Brown always eludes me. I can rarely find it. So let's see. I think if we go through here. Oh, wait. Did I see a brown? I always have so much trouble finding brown. It is my enemy. Brown is like the devil it is the dickens it is always hiding from me let's see brown 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 where is brown i can never find a brown well i can't find a brown so you know what we're on a space planet let's have some purple trees purple will work you know what if you can't find what you're looking for you find what works and you go with that oh so let's go ahead and we'll Go ahead over here and we'll select the brush again and make our entire tree trunk purple. And you know what? We said we were going to do green, but let's go ahead and change that. You know what? We're on an alien planet. Let's go with, let's see, purple. And you know what? We're going to go with an orange. Let's go with an orange. I think I can find orange. So we're going to go with orange and let's see. Yeah, that's a good enough orange. Maybe. Maybe there. We'll try that. Let's try that. It's like a yellowish orange. That's close enough. We'll go ahead and we will select our entire brush again and give it an orange. 
and and give it an orange. And there we go. We have a tree. Yes, it is not a brown and green tree, but it is our tree. We created this tree. It is our masterpiece. But you know what? One little tree. It's lonely. Let's give it some friends. We could copy everything, but let's actually go ahead and make it where we can reuse this creation. So we're going to click on our bottom, which gives us our little round tree trunk. Hold down control and click on the top. And now we have our tree trunk and the top. What we want to do is we want to create a static mesh. This is going to let us recreate this little tree and have a bunch of little trees. So over here in our brush settings, we have a little drop down. And over here in the hidden part is create static mesh. Let's go ahead and create static mesh. We're going to go in our example folder again, white boxy. And we'll name this, we'll name this our happy tree friend. And we'll go ahead and create our happy tree friend. And here you go. We have a happy tree friend. We can drag a happy tree friend in. We can put in there. And we can drag a happy tree friend in here. And we'll put it here. You know, we can make a nice, we can have a little forest going here. And, and let's make this tree the master tree. He sees the boss. So we'll make him a little bit bigger. Look at that. Now when the player gets up here, to their surprise, they'll find three little alien trees. And wouldn't that be nice? So... Wow, that's been a lot of fun so far. What else can we do? Well, you know what? We need a little place for them to start at. Let's have them start in their house. Let's let's have them start maybe in a little room over here. Well, how can we do the room? We have a wall. Well, we need to put a hole in the wall. How do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. We'll put another brush there. Take our little box. And we'll take our little box and we'll move him into the wall. And we'll move him down a little bit. And there's our door. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It looks really silly for a door. How are we going to walk through that? Well, brushes have two modes. Additive, where they become part of the scene. And subtractive, where we take away from the scene. So if we change the subtractive, you'll notice we have a door. And if we go into our scene, we can run through our door. Now, if we went any farther, we'd fall off, and we're not going to do that yet. So we have a door. Well... We need a room. Well, let's see. What's an easy way to make a room? Well, a room is just what? One, two, three, six, six walls. We can make six walls. We can do that. That's pretty simple. But we want to make this quick and easy. And you know what? Epic decided we'll, we'll, we'll let them make rooms really simple. We'll give them hollow stuff. So we can actually take our box and pick a box here. And let's make it a little bit bigger. We want a big room. Our guy's, he's a good guy. Let's, let's give him a big room to start in. So we'll go ahead and make a big room right here. So we have our big room. Now you'll notice I still can't get into our room. Well, I do have a subtractive brush in here somewhere. There we go. And I can actually move it so it's in farther. But all it's doing is subtracting parts of this brush. But since our brush is solid, well, there's nothing inside of it. Well... We can fix that. Down here is a little checkbox. We'll check this box. And it will now become a hollow cube. We have our wall thickness. This is just how thick the walls are. We'll set that to our default of 10. Let's go ahead and erase this wall. We'll go back to here. Now you'll notice our little invisible cube, it disappeared. Where'd it go? Our little subtractive brush. Well, it's still there. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. It is still there. See? It's just hard to see. So now we've run into a little problem. What happened to our invisible box? Why can't we actually subtract and make a door? Well, the issue there was our order. Right here you have order, two first and two last. This changes the order in what they are drawn. So like for example, we drew a wall and we put that on our canvas first. And then we drew the door, we put that on our canvas next. And then we drew our box here and we put that on canvas next. Well the box went over everything else and it was like, I'm stronger than you, I'm better than you. And we were like, okay, and everything else, it got hidden. So you can change the order, and that will allow us to adjust what you can see. So let's actually, we'll step backwards, 
and we'll get rid of everything we can. That's the fun part about computers. You're allowed to just have fun and start over and change things as needed. So we'll go back and here we go. Now we have our wall with a hole in it and we have our big box here. If we change our order and we change this to first, there we go. Now you'll notice this is drawn first and then it's gonna draw our little hole and it's gonna draw our little guy. And our hole now goes all the way through into our room. I don't like the color. Hmm. Well, let's make ourselves a new color. Let's try, you know what? I think a soothing, well, you know what? We haven't done green yet. I know where green's at. Let's make a little soothing green room. Yeah, we'll go with that. And we'll go ahead and make our room green, but the inside's not green. So what do we do? We select, let's go ahead and select the brush itself, make it green. And now we have a green room. If we hit run, our nice little guy has a green little room over here and he can come out and he can run over a nice little level. Well, let's actually, you know what? Our guy needs to start in there. Let's take our little guy and we'll move our little guy in here and we'll move him over here and we'll turn him around and there we go and we'll start and our, our little guy starts in here we'll run out let's pretend you know this is our scene i'll make our door bigger that's just a little bit hard let's make our door a little bit wider let's go like this there we go oh you know what maybe a little bit down here uh, you know what why not let's try that can we get out oh let's make it taller you know what that's the fun part about this. You just, you know, maybe you have a big monster and you need a bigger door. We'll go with that. There we go. And now we can just, oh no, we fell out. Oh, that's because we ate through the bottom of our wall, our floor. Oh no. You know what? Let's go ahead and we'll move that up a little bit. There we go. Ah, that was fun. Okay. So now we can run out. Maybe we want the guys to jump over here. And then we want them to go around. Oh no, we can't get up. Well, we have to fix that, but let's try, you know, let's go over here. We have our stairs. We have all the different things here. We change our height. This changes how tall it is. We'll do that. And you know what? We'll take this and we'll take this and we'll take this and we'll take this and we'll go ahead and we'll move it all up again. And there we go. That's the fun part about white boxing. If it didn't work, you're allowed to change it and you just throw stuff up see what works oh we still can't get up here another one of those accidents let's actually move our little thing up here um you know what i don't know well you know what that's an easy fix we found a issue well let's go ahead and we'll move this over here we'll try it like let's try that let's see what it looks like like that there we go i'll go over here and we'll just you know run around and we'll run up this time and there we go. We made it to the top. Maybe you could, you know, you want this where your first boss fight is, or maybe there's a character. You don't know. It's your game. But we went ahead. We made a nice little scene. We could play with our character. We can have some fun. And we, you know, we didn't spend a lot of time. We just simply went in and we played. You have some other options you can mess with on the brushes. It's up to you to feel free to play with them. But for the most part, we've covered the basics here. It's not supposed to be pretty. We, we made a few little colors here and we made a few little shapes and we've got the basics of our level. Think about this. If we were to replace this, maybe this was a house you started off with and this is a front yard and then maybe the front yard broke apart due to aliens and you had to run while the ground was falling and then you had a mountain path you had to run up. And then maybe at the top of the mountain path, there was a monastery. And then you had to climb the stairs of the monastery because you needed to ring the bell in order to summon the soldiers. Well, there we go. I just actually created that all in our imagination. And you could actually play and see if it would be fun. So that was BSP, white boxing. I hope you had an enjoyable time. You have a good day coding. And I will see you next time.